What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. It's been a little while since we've taken a look at the MSI Claw AI. And uh, in fact, it's been around four months since we've tested this thing out. I kind of picked it up around three days ago, updated everything, and I'm actually really impressed by the performance gains we're seeing here due to Intel's new Arc GPU drivers and the fact that MSI has updated a bunch of stuff with the Claw AI, including Center M. And overall, I'm pretty impressed by the gains we're seeing out of this device. So in this one, I wanted to show you a few new things that we have here and what kind of performance you can expect out of this thing. And this is one of those devices that does get overlooked quite a bit due to availability and pricing. But I'll tell you, I mean, what MSI has done here with all of the updates uh, partnered up with Intel to get all of these newer driver updates, this thing is a really great performing handheld gaming PC. The first thing I wanted to talk about here were new Intel Arc GPU driver updates. Now, uh, when they throw an update out, it's either for an iGPU like we have here or their desktop variants. And the desktop variants do have more to gain than the iGPUs, but a lot of that is transferred over. So uh, within the last four months, we have had a bunch of updates here. Uh, day one patches, fixes for games. But the one thing that I always see people overlook with this device here, graphics, endurance gaming, and I usually set this to auto and performance. So this doesn't work with every game and there's a chance we could get better battery life with some stuff that it functions properly with. So this is something I always like to turn on with it. The next thing I wanted to talk about here were the updates to Center M. And there's one really important thing here because Intel has kind of changed the way the TDP works. Luckily, MSI has updated Center M to support this correctly but it has to do with the power limit one, power limit two. So PL1, PL2 with these Intel GPUs and CPUs. Basically, we need PL2 to be one watt higher than PL1 in order to get the best performance. I'm not exactly sure why this is the case, but you could definitely see a huge jump in performance doing it this way. And for instance, if we had this set at 17 watts over here on PL1, 17 watts over there on PL2, performance could fall on its face. This is something that MSI has fixed with Center M. So uh, basically, we'll just take this down to, we'll do 12 watts. So as soon as we get to 12, you'll see PL1 went down and uh, vice versa. So if I went up with it, so 12, we're at 13 on PL2, PL1 to 13, PL2 up to 14. So we're always one watt higher with that PL2. And this is really important to extract the most performance out of the Claw 8 AI+. First game we have here is Forza Horizon 5. It's an easier one to run, but I always test this on the Claw devices. And this was one of the first games that I ran on this device when I first got it. We had early drivers and with these same exact settings, 1200p medium settings, 17 watt TDP. Over there, we got an average of 66 FPS. But now since the drivers have been updated and the game has been updated, I saw an average by the end of this run here of 88 FPS. That's a 22 FPS increase, and I'm not going to chalk it all up to driver updates. The game has also been updated in that time frame, but it's still pretty amazing to see. And one thing I've been really wanting to do with this game on a handheld is actually run it at a continuous 120 FPS. So I'm at 1200p. I did turn XESS on to balance for this setup here, and I've taken the TDP up to 25 watts. Got a couple dips under, but it's really close to just locking down at 120. Another game I've been playing a lot recently is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 and 4. With this, I'm at a 17 watt TDP, we're at 1200p, but I dropped it down to a low medium mix. And to tell you the truth, we've got more of the stuff set to low here at 17 watts. At 25, we can go up to medium, run it at 60. We've got a couple dips here and it's kind of weird because I'm using TAA. I did go back and try FSR, but with that set to balance, it actually dropped my frame rate down into the mid 40s. There's no XESS right now, and it would be nice because we might be able to get a little more out of this one. The next one we have is Marvel Rivals. We're at 1200p, medium, 25 watt TDP, XESS set to performance. This is the only way I could get this to get over that 60 mark without using XESS frame gen. And I'll tell you, I do like XESS frame gen. Not a lot of games support it, but I've got one last game that I want to try here. 
And by the end, we will use it because it does make a world of difference. Here's Cyberpunk 2077, 1200p, Steam Deck preset, 17 watt TDP. And instead of using FSR with uh, that Steam Deck preset, I just enabled XESS, set to balanced. But recently the game was updated and they introduced XESS frame generation. We're going to take it up to high settings with XESS frame gen on. I had to restart the game to enable it, but I also took the TDP up to 20 watts. So we're not at 25, just a little bit of a jump from that 17. But now we're getting an average over 80 FPS. And with XESS low latency mode, I mean, this feels really good. It also looks absolutely amazing. At the beginning of the video, I also mentioned that we're seeing better battery life across the board with all of these updates to the MSI Claw 8 AI. From Center M's manual mode, the lowest we can go is an 8 watt TDP. We could go to endurance mode, but I noticed that it does pull a little more in endurance as opposed to just setting it manually to 8. And right at the bottom of our performance metrics on screen, I've got the total battery draw. So I wanted to do this with two lower end games, plus I wanted to test at a 15 watt and 25 watt TDP with some AAA stuff. But if you take a look on screen, with this set at an 8 watt TDP, it doesn't need 8 watts to run this game, it's super easy to run. Total battery draw, even with RGB on right now, is under 8 watts, which is really impressive. Screen brightness is set to 50%. I've also got the refresh rate set to 60 hertz. That's how I wanted to test this. Next, I moved over to Cyberpunk 2077 for some AAA stuff at a 17 watt TDP. And we're drawing right under 22 watts in total. And of course, at a 25 watt TDP, it's just going to draw a lot more from the battery. But this will give us a really good idea of what kind of battery life we can get out of this thing now. With the Claw 8 AI, we've got an 80 watt hour battery. All my testing, we were at a 50% screen brightness, 60 hertz refresh rate, fan set to auto, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and RGB on. 8 watt mixed indie gaming averaged 9.2 watts between those two games, 8 hours and 40 minutes. 17 watt AAA gaming pulls 21.5 watts in total from that battery, looking at around 3 hours and 40 minutes at 17 watts. And at a 25 watt TDP, total battery draw jumps up to around 31.8 watts. That's two hours and 20 minutes still out of this thing because we've got that bigger 80 watt hour battery. And I mentioned the fans here because that does play a big role in battery draw, especially with a system like this that has a dual fan setup. When those fans are spinning up, they can draw quite a bit of energy, killing the battery a lot faster. So yeah, overall, we're definitely going to see some really good battery life. It's not as efficient as the Steam Deck, but we do have a much larger battery here. So yeah, coming back to the Claw 8 AI after a few months is netting us much better performance out of it, and it comes down to those new GPU drivers. Uh, Intel is kind of trucking along when it comes to that, and I did mention that they do have a lot to gain from drivers across the board from their iGPUs to their dedicated GPUs. After all, I mean, if we were talking AMD here, you know, they've got some really fleshed out drivers for their graphics. Intel is kind of newer to the market when it comes to these newer generation of GPUs, so uh, they're still learning. But yeah, it's progressing pretty decently. Is it worth buying one of these right now? Personally, I really don't know. In the end, it's always going to be up to you. If it was me, I would probably hold off until the next generation if I'm trying to go with Intel or maybe even a Z2 Extreme device. But I've been doing some testing with the MSI Claw A8. I've posted a bunch of videos. If you want to check those out, I'll leave a link in the description. It's their newer handheld hitting the market with that Z2 Extreme. And to tell you the truth, there's not a huge jump over the Z1 Extreme that we've seen in a lot of handhelds so far. But it's still pretty nice to come back to a device like this after a while and see a nice hike in performance. And recently on the channel, I posted a video with this chip here, the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V versus the Z1 Extreme and the Z2 Extreme. If you want to check that out, I'll leave a link in the description. I was actually pretty surprised by those results. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. If there's anything else you want to see running on the MSI Claw 8 AI or any other handheld on the market right now, just let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.